Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. To protect your online identity, Surfshark is the ideal VPN. It's easy to install and run on unlimited devices, even on a single subscription. When using free public Wi-Fi, you've probably wondered if that's safe to use. With Surfshark, you don't have to worry about that ever again. They will encrypt your data, making it useless for people who steal it. Surfshark can also be used on your favorite streaming services, easily changing you from one connection to the other by going to another country entirely and accessing that complete library. And finally, it will also help keep your online privacy private. Surfshark provides IP and DNS leak protection so that nobody can find where you're connecting from. If you're interested in getting Surfshark for yourself, be sure to use my promo code SCALEMODELING. You get 84% off and 4 months for free. I'll leave the link in the description down below and also the top comment. Thanks Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Now back to work. So when going through the instructions of the R8, I discovered that the rear bumper could be glued on prior to painting, making it a lot easier to match it and fix some mistakes that might have been there already from the kit, which after painting that's probably not possible. I also decided to put the engine uh, cover, deck lid, the bonnet, I'm not sure what it's called when it's on the rear, but I'm just going to call it a bonnet on as well and glue that permanently in place. As there is a nice big glass cover on top, you can still see the engine and this way the panel gaps and lines are a lot nicer. So as you could just see, the rear bumper stuck out a little bit on each side, so I decided to fix that by sanding it smooth with that top section of that rear panel, just removing a little bit of material and making it nice and flush and cleaning it up that way. The mold lines were also marked off with some black permanent marker to show me where they are and use it as a guide coat and then sand it off with some sanding sticks. All of the panel lines themselves were already pretty nice, but a little bit of extra depth doesn't hurt, so I decided to scribe them out a little bit as well. All of the mold lines were initially sanded with those sanding sticks and that is a bit rough of a grit, about 240 grit. So I sanded those first with a 400 grit and then sanded the rest of the body with a 600 grit in order to prepare it for primer. So I'm using the new paint line from Street Blisters. You might know them from a couple wheel sets and other accessories for mainly Hondas in 124 scale. And in this case they decided to add a paint line to their lineup as well. I started off with the primer. Street Blisters paint is pre-thinned so you don't need any additional thinning. Just shake the bottle really well and then pour it in the airbrush and you're off. The first coat is now applied and I got kind of used to working with this primer. It levels out really nicely, is nice and thin to spray, so I let it sit for about 15 minutes and moved on to the second coat of primer, going a little bit heavier just trying to get that coverage up there to a final good coverage. After the second coat was applied, the coverage was fully achieved and I let it sit and cure for about an hour before moving on. After about an hour of curing time, the primer has nicely cured, so I could move on to sanding it a little bit. The primer was really smooth straight out of the airbrush, so it didn't really need this, but there were a couple small dust spots that landed in there, and I wanted them to be removed, so I took out some 3000 grit sanding sponges and sanded it smooth before moving on to painting it in some yellow. I decided to go with a Ferrari Yellow Giallo Modena. It's a really nice bright yellow, and Street Blisters was kind enough to send that out so I could start applying it. With those hard to reach and easy to forget spots out of the way, I could move on to a nice light coat on the rest of the body. Now since this is yellow with most paint manufacturers, it doesn't really cover all that well. You need to take it really easy, building it up slowly, layer by layer. Now of course this isn't any different with street blisters, though I have noticed that the coverage on this is really nice and it levels out really easily just as the primer itself, creating a nice smooth finish pretty much instantly.
since I will be applying four coats in total with this yellow just to be sure that I achieve the full coverage that I desire, I let it sit and cure for 15 minutes in between coats just to give it enough time to cure and move on to that second coat. The second coat is on another 15 minutes of cure time moving on to the third coat and after this third coat another 15 minutes and a fourth and final coat just to be sure that everything is nice and even and covered all over. So the third coat was applied, 15 minutes went by for curing, then moved on to the fourth and final coat. After that fourth coat, I decided to let it sit and cure for about an hour before moving on to the next stage. I decided to add some decals to this one, and specifically carbon fiber of course. I'm going to go for the full carbon fiber exterior package on this car, meaning the side blades, the diffusers on the rear, and probably some other parts here and there. I made a quick template with some masking tape of these side blades, transferred that to some scale production carbon fiber decal, carefully cut that out and started laying it down. There are multiple tutorials and videos on my channel for decal application and specifically the carbon fiber process. Feel free to check out my channel and those videos of course. The logos on the rear and on the front were applied too. I then let it cure for another hour, added some extra heat with a hair dryer and then moved on to the clear coating. The clear coat was supplied kindly by Street Blisters as well. It's their 2K Clear. If you've used 2K Clear from any other manufacturer before, it's pretty much the same process. You mix up the clear according to the specifications on the packaging, just mix up as much as you need, and then you're off to the races. You're going to apply some light coats first on the decals in this case, just to let them get used to the clear coat and not do some weird things. And while you're at it, also go over those hard to reach, easy to forget spots then you could move on to a nice thick coat on the rest of the body as well to get it nice and glossy. What I noticed during the application of this first coat was pretty much the same as I noticed during the primer and color stage as well. The paint lays down really nicely and flows out to a super smooth finish pretty much instantly after it cures for a little bit, which is a really good thing to have. So after applying that first coat of clear, I let it sit for about 5 minutes to cure, then moved on to applying a second coat of clear, just as heavy as that first one, to get it nice and glossy all over the place and get a full gloss coverage. After applying that second and final coat of clear, the clear coat is nice and glossy even all over and I'm really happy with the way that it came out. The paint works really well, really easy and has a great finish and also feels like it's high quality paint. I absolutely would recommend you guys to give this paint a try. There will be a link in the description to the Street Blisters website and I will be using it again in the future for sure. I will now let it sit for two to three days before touching it again and see you guys in the next build video.